Last week, we said, let's pray this week, asking the Lord to open our eyes. Open my eyes, Lord. This week, I suggest the prayer, help me guard my heart, Lord. Let's say it together. Help me guard my heart, Lord. Why? Because your heart is your true self. Your heart can be good or bad. Your heart is also your responsibility. We read in Proverbs, and you can read it with me, 432, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Spring the issues of life. Your heart is your true self, who you are inside. In fact, nobody knows your heart beside God. Only God knows who you really, 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 really are. You know when there, when there are shootings, when there are things happening, usually the families are shocked. They say, what is that? We would never, ever have thought that one of our family members would do such a thing. Why? Because who knows the heart? Only God knows the heart. And we can put a good face, we can look good, we can talk good, but that may not reflect what we really are or who we really are inside. In fact, your heart in modern language is your personality. And how does your personality or character form, develop? It's the result of everything that you have heard, everything that you have seen, everything that you have gone through, and how you have reacted. Like if you have reacted with a lot of anger, maybe one day you can, out of the blue, the, and nothing special is going on, just the guy in front of you, in the car in front of you, is too slow to start, and you start walking like crazy, you open the door, you go down. That happened to a friend of mine, and he just hit him in the face. Because all that anger that has been developed, the heart, has become so angry. So we got to be aware that we need to watch over our heart. Our personality is the sum total of everything that we have gone through and how we have reacted to it. The, the heart is who we really are. As you see on the picture here, it's a result of what you see, what you say, what you do, what you hear, what you understand. Let's read 1 Samuel 16, 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. That was David's bigger brother. They, God wanted to choose a king. And the strong members of uh, the family came before little David and the Lord told the prophet Samuel was supposed to anoint the new king. He says, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him. For, let's read that together, for the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Let's say that one more time. But the Lord looks at the heart. Your heart can be good, or your heart can be bad. And all, all as, as a rule, all of our hearts to start with are bad, because we're sinners. Since Adam and Eve sin, the sin nature has been communicated to us. So we, we, we're, we're bad to start with. But 
when Jesus comes into our hearts, we get a new heart. We get a new spirit, and that spirit influences our emotions, our thinking, and uh, our heart can develop something good and good and better. That's why the Bible says, my son, give me your heart. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible, Proverbs 23, 26, when God says, my son, my daughter, give me your heart. Give me your heart. I, I, will, I will take care of your heart. I will forgive what needs to be forgiven. I will reshape what needs to be reshaped. I will heal what needs to be healed. If you're a very angry person, I will heal that. I will soothe it by my, by my spirit. The worst is when, like for Judas, it says when Judas had decided to sell Jesus for 30 pieces of, uh, of coin for 30 coins, Satan entered in him. And, and we never want something like that to happen. We never want to let the enemy come and take over because for Judas, he did something miserable. He died in a miserable way. We don't want to go in that direction. Your heart can be good or your heart can be bad. Your heart is good when it is filled with the Spirit of God. When your heart is filled with the Spirit of God, this is what we read in Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. When we receive Christ, the Spirit of Christ makes us born again and develops that new character, that new personality that is actually, it's the character of Christ. That's the way Christ was. The fruit of the Spirit is a summary of Jesus' personality and the Spirit wants to develop that personality in each one, each one of us. Jesus is our second chance. Jesus is our redeemer. Jesus is our model. Jesus is our savior. So once again, my son, give me your heart. And if you haven't given your heart to God, do it today. Don't wait any longer. Just say, God, I give you my heart. Jesus, come into my heart. God, change me. God forgive me, God save me, and God will do it. Amen? Your heart is your responsibility. Guard, how does the heart go bad? How could it go bad? How could you develop a, a bad personality or dangerous personality if you don't guard the windows? The windows of our soul, because the heart is also the soul. I could use the word soul for the heart, or personality, or, or character, or your true self. Guard the windows. Guard the windows. The windows are the ears and the eyes. Those are the windows through which influences come, depending on who we listen to, depending on what we watch. That's why we should we should be very careful when we give cell phones, when we give tablets to our children. We should have the parental controls because today the strong, one of the strongest financial businesses is called the pornography industry. And sometimes even your own bank is supporting it. This, I read that this week. That there's so many things we don't know. Things look good, the building looks good, but where does that money go? Well, for many, it goes to support the pornography industry. And when someone starts watching pornography, whether a child or an adult, he becomes addicted. Because pornography has that thing that it, it, it releases a certain hormone 
uh, that creates temporary pleasure, but at the same time, it makes you dependent so that you never, never, ever have enough. When you have uh, watched uh, a naked body uh, on a pornography thing or uh, two bodies naked together doing things that are supposed to be private, when you watch that on your phone or when you watch that on your tablet or on your television, when you do that, you develop that, that hormone, that thing, that chemical that will want more and more. It's like with cigarette. Somebody said, what's the most dangerous cigarette? The first one. Because if you can stop the first one, you will not smoke another one and a pack and a pack and more and more. Because it's, it's addictive. And that's what happens with drugs. And pornography is a drug. And unfortunately, there are people who want to make money out of that drug. That's why they sponsor those sites and those pop-ups that come up on phones or on tablets or on computers. So you want to you want to guard your eyes by guarding your children, by having the parental controls on the phone. And if you don't know how to do it, well, the people who sell your phone, you ask them. You say, well. Uh, set the settings here so that when my, my children use that phone, it will not go onto a, a site where they are not supposed to go. And they will, they will help you with that. Watch who you listen to. When you listen to the, the hate speech, when you listen to those hate speech, it has a way to come into your mind. It has a way to come into your heart. Watching uh, your heart, guarding your heart, is watching that window of the eyes and that window of the ears. Job says in Job 31 verse 1, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I look upon a young woman? He was married and he said, I made a covenant with my eyes, I will not look at a young woman. I will not look at a virgin. I will not covet. And that's one of the commandments that we should not covet. Psalm 1, 1 says on the Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Watch who you listen to. And I would say not only guard the windows but guard the oven. What's cooking in you? You know how you make food. You make it simmer. You make it cook. Sometimes some, some of the best food, you, you leave it there for an hour. Sometimes you set your, 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 your oven when you leave home so that it will stop in one or two hours because you want that cooking to simmer and you want the, 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 the cooking to be well done and to release all the flavors that are in the food. Well, what's cooking in here? Your brain is an oven. Your, your, your emotion are an oven. What's cooking in there? What are you thinking about? Because after you close the windows and you close the ears and the eyes to the bad influence, if you keep thinking about it, Especially if, if you looked at something you weren't supposed to look at and you keep thinking, you keep thinking, then you develop covetousness. Then, and, or if, if someone, someone offended you, one of the worst things that the enemy uses, he wants us to get offended. And somebody said, I read it on the internet this week again, we are the generation of the offended. Everybody is offended. Everybody has a reason to complain. Instead of forgiving, instead of forgetting, instead of saying, well, too bad for them if they did that or said that or think that, we, we just, uh, we, we keep reminding ourselves, we keep feeling those emotions. Oh, when, when he said, when she said, that hurts me. How could she do that? How could she say that? How could he look at me this way? How? how? I, mean, I, can, I can develop that when I drive. I, I can do it. You ask my wife, she knows. 
I, I, I drive by the speed limit. And you know what I discovered? That there's maybe two or three more people that do that. Because hundreds of people pass me. Thousands of people pass me. And they pass me real fast. And they cut in front of me. And boy, if I don't watch the oven, I could be cursing them. I could be, I could be telling my wife, look at that idiot, look at what he did. That's not, you're supposed to respect the, the, the speed limit. Sometimes I, I even try to show them the sign. When there is a 60 sign, I try to show the other driver, look at the sign. Sometimes I go like this. I mean, and that's not good. I'm, not, I'm supposed to keep my hands on the steering wheel. But see, we can cook. We can cook anger. We can cook all kinds of things. That doesn't mean we approve it, and we don't have to approve it. And if we get a chance to talk about it, well, maybe it'd be good to talk about it if you know the person. But be careful. Sometimes they may punch you if you tell them the truth. Some people don't like it. So guard your thoughts. Guard your emotions. Think about what is pure. Think loving thoughts. Do not remain offended. Forgive. Psalm 19 is another one of my favorite verses. Psalm 19, verse 14. Let's say it together. It's such a great verse. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. We're going to read it again. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Even Ephesians 4.26 says, it's okay to be angry for a few seconds. It's okay because when something's not right, it's wrong. And it's okay to, to feel some, some anger about it. But don't remain angry. Don't say bad words. Don't curse. Don't show your fist. That's what Ephesians 4.26 says. Be angry, but do not sin. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. When anger becomes wrath, you're going to have nightmares. And you know what happens when you go to bed angry and filled with wrath? Usually, you wake up feeling you haven't slept well. Because it affects even your subconscious. It's, a, it's amazing how the, 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 the Bible and God are so true about what they, what they say. Guard the windows, guard the oven, and guard the exits. Because it comes in, it cooks, and then it comes out through your words or through your actions. Guard the exits. Guard your words and actions. Instead of cursing, bless. Encourage. Do not curse. Do good things. Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. We want to co communicate a blessing. We want to communicate grace to others. And again, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Don't let negative words, negative actions develop because that's when you express how your heart is bad. But Jesus says, from the good heart comes good things. So let's learn. Let's learn, and I suggest that you pray this prayer this week. Help me guard my heart, O Lord. First, give your heart to the Lord, and then keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Your life will be totally different. You'll have more peace. You'll have more joy. Wouldn't the world be different if we all 
wants our heart. We want the window, the oven, and the exit. May God help us and bless us this week. Amen.